So I'm going to talk about the totally different uh, aspect of the proximal humerus fracture. So I think all the obvious fractures and the fair results are always good. But always we have to think about the even the small fractures with uh, usually associated with the shoulder dislocations. And my approach is offered to get the optimum results by me doing an arthroscopy. Maybe we can give a better fracture. So when you talk about the classification of the greater tuberosity fractures, because you're talking about two fractures when associated with the shoulder dislocation. One is on the humeral side, that is a greater tuberosity fracture, which is very common. Other is the glenoid rim fractures, which is common with the shoulder dislocations, which you should not miss after the reduction of the shoulder dislocation. So when you come to the classification, one is the more of this avulsion fracture with the rotator cuff, which is the more amenable for the rotator cuff uh, repair by arthroscopically. The other fracture is the split fractures, which is uh, undisplaced. You are going to treat conservatively. Whichever is displaced, we can do an open. Again, still, you can use an arthroscopic assisted fixation. The other aspect of the fracture is the depressed fracture, which can be treated conservatively because it's a collapse. It is uh, uh, not much cough. It will not get injured. Most often, it can be treated conservatively. The initially, we know that needs classification. We know that anything with more than one centimeter displacement requires surgery. Others can be treated conservatively. But I think we had come up to the displacement up to the 5 mm is the optimum now to get that optimum result. We know that, that you can get a good results with the abduction of 90 to 100 degrees. But if you want to get a full abduction and a full external rotation, we, I think the displacement is more than 5 mm is less to tolerated in a young individual. So, so we should consider fixing the greater tuberosity in anatomical position if it is displaced more than 5 mm, whether it is superiorly or in the uh, posteriorly. So when you come to the classification, we know that all the undisplaced fractures can be treated conservatively just putting in a sling for a week time. Anything with associated with the shoulder dislocation, then it needs at least two to three weeks of immobilization for the soft tissues to heal. Anything with the displaced greater tuberosity fracture with more than 5 mm, then better to do a fixed, fix it up through open or arthroscopic appro approach. The arthroscopic greater tuberosity fixation has got some advantages because it's a minimally invest, invasive and decreased blood loss. But however, it requires uh, expertise and uh, technically challenging and long operating time. But if you see the literatures, this is a systemic review. You can see the 16 studies, 345 patients that compared both arthroscopic and open, there is no huge uh, difference. So if you are doing a open, it doesn't matter because I was doing these fractures openly a few years before. So the classical uh, uh, fractures which can be treated arthroscopically is this is the fracture where you can see that completely displaced and lying between the proximal humerus and the acromion. So this is the fracture which requires a complete reduction and fixation. So that is the MRI picture. You can see that entire cuff is attached to that fragment. So this is the fr uh, fracture which can be fixed through arthroscopically. Um, and uh, the uh, other view of beautiful of arthroscopy is that you can see the entire uh, structures, including your biceps, whether it's damaged or not. Uh, this is the same case which I sh uh, showed you. And you can see that the fracture fragment, what you're seeing, the white structure is the biceps tendon. And uh, you can, so this extent almost created tuberosity along with the lesser tuberosity in some part. And uh, we see the reducibility first, then we can fix it with the anchors on both the medial side and lateral side. So when you do the fixation here, we go as close to the uh, articular cartilage so that your cuff and your reduction of the fragment is closely uh, having the anatomical reduction. So that is how we use the uh, anchors. When you do a, a fixation of this fragment, it's not easy. It's usually technically challenging than your rotator cuff tear because the fragments are so big, you cannot use any anti-grade device. So we may need to do a retrograde device, which is like a bird peak or an lasso, like a shuttling procedure where you have to take that uh, multiple bites medial to the fragment as well as the posterior or anterior to the fragments. So that's why it's a technically it's a little, takes a little longer time. Then with uh, knotted or knotless technique, we can use the uh, two anchors on either, at least minimum we require a two or three uh, lateral anchors to have a, a, a strong fixation. Because you can see that is the final fixation on the below picture. So this, uh, we, this, this puts the cuff in the current, current anatomical position and you can mobilize very quickly because it's a four screws construct. It's a biomechanically a superior, yeah, almost or equal to the screw fixations. Then another patient of 46 years old, male patient, we can see the same kind of picture. But sometimes when you have a, uh, this kind of uh, fractures, it can be fixed with uh, as like uh, anchors, as I told before. 
or even you can use the even arthroscopically assisted uh, 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 cancellous screws with uh, washer. This allows you to do a C directly under arthroscopically and you can use the same screws with 4.5 mm screws with washer. Again, that give you very good reduction. That is the uh, portals which we uh, encounter when you do an arthroscopic uh, fixation. So that is the intraoperative fixture. So you are just like intraarticular tibial plateau fracture with arthroscopic assisted. So it gives you the more view. Sometimes when you see this kind of fractures, it is very easy through the arthroscopically. Again, I don't do it on anchors. It's a 15-20 uh, minutes procedure. You do an arthroscopy. You can use the hormones through the uh, superior portal, reduce the fragment. Then this is like a, a image guidance fixations, like you fix it with the temporary K wires. Then you use the cannulated uh, uh, screws as they are seeing through the arthroscopically. So again, so this is not a very tough procedure through arthroscopically. This gives you an another aspect of seeing directly. Getting the reduction is very, very important in the greater tuberosity fractures so that you don't get any impingement superiorly and you don't displace the fracture posteriorly. So that gives the excellent reduction the postoperatively. That is the final functional uh, uh, healing of that fractures on both AP and lateral view. When you come to the glenoid fractures, we know that it is very obvious when the fracture becomes a bigger and bigger, the stability of the shoulder is always better. When the fracture is become smaller, like less than 25% of the fracture, especially if it is displaced, they are the unstable shoulder fractures. So these fractures has to be fixed because they may, these patients will come back with you with recurrent dislocations. So when you do the dislocation reduction, it's very important to look for the fractures. In the plain x-ray, if you doubt, you have to do a CT scan or MRI scan. There are many ways of uh, fixation, uh, doing the fixation of these fractures because these are the less than 25% of your glenoid structures which is displaced with your bank art, all the soft tissues. So that's why you lose one-fourth one one of our glenoid that resulting in whenever the patient lifts, it dislocates more. That damages the glenoid further. So the arthroscopic fixation is amenable for only type 1A and B fracture like anterior rim fracture as well as the posterior rim fractures. There are many techniques have been described in the literature with equally good results. The Suhaya one, which is very popular when you describe this technique, where simply just you put back all the soft tissues like a bank art, then it, it comes and sits in the place. Then we have a special jigs to reduce the fragments nowadays, and we also use for the, our lethargy procedure. Instead of lethargy, we use for iliac crest graft. This is an another procedure where we can do a reduction. So this is a tech, uh, maybe I'll take one more minute to show two, three, two cases. It's a 40 years old male patient. You can see that fragment looks maybe smaller in this axial view, but if you see this view, and it's a very big fragment, you can see that almost one-fourth of your fracture, and it's displaced immediately. That is the most important. Anything which is undisplaced fracture, still you can treat conservatively. If it is displaced, then we use this uh, arthroscopic fixation. We can use the screw that is the medial part of the glenoid, which the screw is down, and we take the uh, shuttling devices through the fragment and take these fiber wires through the fragment so that the fragment can be put back to the position. So first we remove all the threads through these uh, anchors, through the fragment if possible or go, you can go underneath the fragment and take it out. And we use the, once you shuttle the, all the fiber wires from that middle anchor, then we use one anchor in the superiorly and one anchor in the inferiorly. Probably you may get, uh, uh, it takes a bit longer time to show all the video. but. You can see the glance of you that uh, once you fix the superior and the inferior, then the fragment can be put back and use the another row that is a lateral row, uh, knotless anchors can be used to fix that fragments. So that's how you fix that all the fractures and this is a six months follow up. You can see the complete consolidation of that fragment uh, with the, uh, healing in the both uh, all the views. This is a 34 years old patient. Again, you can see that displacement is completely on the medial. It's like Alps solution, like a banker. So anything which is displaced so medially that will not heal in the position. You can see the other view, it's a completely displaced. So again, this is fixed through the arthroscopically, there are unstable fracture. This is the post-op CT scan. You can show that complete healing of that fragment with a good functional outcome. Maybe this is the last case. Sometimes you get very bad comminuted fractures. Again, you can do open fixations too, but again, arthroscopy minimizes your all the open soft tissue damage. So this can be still fixed. Uh, uh, arthroscopically by uh, doing this multiple anchor fixations that will give you the anatomical reduction so that uh, your soft tissues on the deltoid is uh, limited by doing an arthroscopic fixation. The final fixation, the advantage of uh, doing this fixation is you can do a remplissage also so that gives more stability for the shoulder that also helps the fracture fragment to healing the, uh, to heal the fracture fragment. To conclude, displaced greater tuberosity fractures are less tolerated 
more than 5 mm displacement in a younger people better do a fixation whether you do a open or arthroscopically it doesn't matter but our and greater tuberosity fractures are amenable for have advantages of arthroscopic fixation for the arthroscopic fixation for the gleaner especially type 1a and b like a rim fractures are ideal and all the techniques are good but make sure that we have to do an anatomical reduction and key principle is that reduction of that particular fragment and they have got a great healing potential and union is almost thank you very much Thank you.